now we're gonna get our little acceleration with the Tundra. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a 2020 Toyota Tundra SR5 in the TRD Sport Package, and it is finished in Voodoo Blue. A huge shout and thank you to the Larch Miller Toyota here in Murray for providing us with the Tundra. Definitely check out the inventory in the link below if you're in the market for new Toyota. Let's get right into the video. So under the hood, we have a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter V8 that goes through a six speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 13 around town and then 17 on the highway with power outputs being 381 horsepower and then 401 pound feet of torque and a zero to 60 time of about six and a half seconds. Go over the front end on the TRD Sport. So I've got the lights on. You guys can see it is full LED lights. And I really like the front lights on the Tundra. Just like the accent light that goes around and then the LED light cluster in general. I think it's a really good solid look. And I love how they've kind of like blacked out certain elements on it. Yes, you get the giant hood and venting, similar to what you get on the TRD Pro. Everything down below is gonna be body painted on the Sport, so we get tons of voodoo blue. And then the Toyota logo also doubles as a sensor. Fog lights are also on this particular package, but yeah, overall, I think the front end is just like large, menacing, and I think it's good looking. Coming around the side here, we've got two 75 millimeter tires and 20 inch rims in the front and in the rear as well. And then I love the blue shocks inside here. I just wanna show that to you guys quickly cause it's just a neat little look. But other than that, the badging is all blacked out on this truck. Again, you got the TRD Sport badge there at the back and then here's kind of like a full look. And then yes, this is the smaller sized cab configuration. Now here is the key fob for the TRD Sport. You do have a couple functions. You've got your unlock and then the lock function. So the other thing you can do is remote start it. So you have to press it and then hold it down and and that is what we'll do the remote start function. The lights will blink and that lets you know that the remote start is in the process of happening. And then you hear that 5.7 V8 come to life out of the uh, little black exhaust tip. Let's go over the rest of the elements here in the rear. We're gonna start with stuff inside of the bed. Now lowering down the tailgate does have a slow lower function. It already has a bed liner from the factory, which is really nice. I love how you've got little blue hooks that are popping out in the bed though. It's a pretty cool little look. It does say Tundra at the end of the bed. You do get the cargo light there above and in general it's got a decent amount of bed space now lifting up the tailgate it's actually relatively light Let's go over the rest of the rear so the taillights are a little bit on the dated side hopefully they do like leds or something to just update the rear end of the truck more black badging you've got the receiver hitch down below towing capacity on the truck by the way is roughly around 10,000 pounds and then you do have parking sensors there along the rear and also i forgot to mention mud flaps on the truck now coming to the back here, I actually really like the door handle. It's just kind of like an interesting look, but here's the door panel in the rear. Notice it is definitely a little bit more on the basic side, a little bit harder touch material. And then, well, we've got a box of goodies, but we're gonna move that over and also this over. So you can see the seats. Here are the seats in the rear, full cloth seats. And notice there's a little handle right here that you can actually lift up the seat. So there's extra storage just underneath the seat. And then there is a little 12 volt here. And well, just for your guys' sake, I'll kind of pop in and uh, it's kind of hard to get in without a side step. So I would recommend investing into some side steps. But in terms of legroom, it's okay actually. Um, I'm not like super comfortable, but it's not bad either. In terms of headroom, I'm 5'11 and I've got a decent amount. So headroom's not a problem, it's just legroom's a little bit limited. There's a couple interesting things. This actually has keyless entry on this SR5 and blind spot monitoring as well. Now, with the door panel here at the front, again, they keep things pretty basic. This is actually like relatively soft padding, but then this isn't as soft, which is interesting. You think that it would be switched, but window controls right there. And then here are the seats in the front. Again, they've got that cloth trim, which is actually really comfortable to sit in. It's gonna stay a little bit more neutral temperature-wise. It is power adjustable for the front seats. And then do you have the pedals just down below? I've got a bunch of controls in this little area right here. These are for the cargo lights. You've got the mirror adjustments, for example, that is the rear window. And I just wanna show you guys kind of like a back view of the steering wheel, but there's everything before we pop in. Now to start things up, foot on the brake, push the push start and that 5.7 V8 will come to life and all of these screens. I mean, it even says starting, Toyota logo, boom. Here is the steering wheel in the Tundra. We have the controls for the volume on that side. You got the Toyota logo in the center and then all the controls for the center stack right over here. A couple safety tech controls right here. I'll zoom in so you guys can see them a little bit better. Got the collision assistance and then the lane departure assistance, cruise control peeping in the background there. And then you got the phone controls 
But yeah, that's everything for the steering wheel other than the stocks behind it. This is the stock for the lights and the turn signal and the other side is the stock for the windshield wipers. Now here's the gauge cluster setup. As you can see, it is pretty basic with everything, including the RPMs and the speed. There is that little like center stack screen that you can scroll through. It gives you different bits of information. It does the job in terms of giving you the information. It just, again, looks a little bit more on the basic side of things. Now here is the infotainment system. I'm gonna show you guys the backup camera first. So you have the backup camera. It's got that little trajectory line. They do not turn with the steering wheel, but the parking sensors in the front and the rear do work very well. So parking this truck is actually relatively easy with all those systems. The rest of the infotainment system, this is just Toyota's normal infotainment system. Nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy. It's easy to use. They've got buttons all around. They actually have this pretty nice trim all around the infotainment system as well. The buttons work really well. And in terms of the response time on everything, I feel like response time is good for the buttons and then response time when you actually press stuff is actually good as well and good we didn't get copyrighted right there but yeah I think it's a good touch screen. Here's all the controls for the dual zone climate. Notice that screen just above it so it kind of shows you everything that is happening there. Pretty straightforward with that and then we've got a couple of USBs down here and some extra controls. We've got the controls for the stability control, the parking sensors and that little 12 volt and then there's this uh, cup holder that would kind of hit into that little area. This is the drive line select so you've got your two-wheel drive your full high and then your four-wheel low you can shift between on that now this whole area is where the cup holders are and then you got the shifter for the six speed and then it does say trd at the top you can shift the gears yourself manually if you would like and then you've got little sr5 badging here so you got plenty of badging on the interior opening up the center console i mean you can see it is just gigantic and you can see there's little areas where you can thread the cable through now coming over to the glove box itself good sized glove box and yeah now up top here we've got a little sunglass holder and then it is a lighter colored headliner the last thing i want to show you guys is the rear window so i showed you that button earlier and that is what opens up the rear window now it doesn't have that like giant window where it opens up everything it just has like a traditional window which is okay but you can get tundras that like the whole window goes down if you want now that we're done going over the interior on this tundra sr5 let's quickly talk about pricing so this particular the Tundra with the TRD Sport Package in the SR5 and all the equipment it has, stickers for just under $50,000 before any type of market adjustment. That all being said, let's take this SR5 out and see how it drives. Let's talk about visibility here in the Tundra before we set off. So visibility over the hood is relatively good. The middle part does kind of block visibility just a little bit. There's your visibility through both of the mirrors in the Tundra. And then here's visibility throughout the rear. With this being a smaller cab, it is a little bit harder with that area. There's that little blind spot, but it does have blind spot monitoring. And well, let's set off. We are initially setting off here in the 2020 Tundra SR5 and let's talk about the road noise and the ride quality first and foremost. So in terms of the road noise so far with the Tundra, just like all the other Tundras, it's pretty quiet. It's definitely pretty much right on average with most other trucks in this segment. And then in terms of the ride quality, Again, pretty much average with most other trucks on this segment. It's not any smoother, it's not any less smooth, and holy crap, my glasses keep fogging up, I can't do this. But it's it's right on par with where it should be from like a ride quality perspective, and then also just from a road noise perspective. And then taking a turn here, steering is super light, super effortless, I mean, it's just it's easy, it handles really well. Now in terms of like the vagueness on it, it's pretty vague, but I mean, again, that's expected. Now, the biggest thing is, does this handle different than a Crew Max? I can't really perceive that. I feel like this handles pretty much identical to a Crew Max. I can't really tell the difference between the two trucks. Now we're gonna get our little acceleration with the Tundra. Did take a second. In terms of the power and acceleration, I mean, you guys heard the zero to 60 time about six and a half seconds on the Tundra, which 
I mean, pretty much puts it right in line with most other trucks in the segment. The acceleration is pretty strong. The only thing is because of the transmission, because it doesn't have a more updated transmission and engine, it's not gonna get as good fuel economy. It's not gonna be as quick shifting. But what you lack in fuel economy and quick shifting, you definitely get in reliability. I mean, this transmission and engine combination is so well tested that these Tundras can have so many miles on them and the overall maintenance costs on them are relatively low and just the reliability in general on them is super solid. So yeah, if you definitely want like a super reliable truck, then it's it's definitely up there. Let's get into summing things up with this 2020 Tundra and where I really see the standing. So initially coming into reviewing this truck, I thought that this was gonna be a video about how this is like an awesome truck that you should go for instead of the TRD Pro just from like a price point perspective, it's gonna be a lot less expensive than a TRD Pro. But when you option these TRD Sports out, I mean, a TRD Pro is in the low 50s to high 50s. Again, depending on how many options you add, if you do a fully loaded one, then yes, this is like 10 grand less, which this would be a cool option to go for. But if you're doing like a entry level TRD Pro, it, it almost doesn't make sense to go for this truck. So this truck is kind of confusing, but if you're looking for like a fully loaded package with all the safety tech, and you want something that you could build up, um, you know, just better than a TRD Pro, then I think this is the route to go for a truck for like a build. It already looks really cool. And then you can add a little bit nicer tires to it, maybe upgrade the suspension, add an exhaust to it, that kind of stuff, and just make it into a crazy cool off-roading truck. And yeah, that's kind of where I think that this uh, TRD Sport stands. That is gonna sum things up for the 2020 Tundra SR5 with the TRD Sport package. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Toyota here in Murray for providing us with the truck. Definitely check out the inventory in the link below if you're in the market for a new Toyota. I will see all of you in that next video.